Hi, Pete. How are you? Good, Dan. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> nice to catch up, my friend. It, it's been too long. It has. Um, I think the last time I caught you face to face was probably at the beginning of the year, or if not last year, wasn't it? Or yeah, I think I, I got a feeling it was early this year, but it was only a. a it was brief a brief one at, just... in Tasmania. Yeah, actually, yeah. wasn't it the beginning? Of the year? that was no, only a couple no. of months ago. Yeah. yeah, but where does it go? Time just flies. So it's just been. Uh, mm. An incredibly full on year. I, I sort of expected this year to be a bit slow of a start and yeah. uh, travel is meant to be a lot less. Yeah, and it's not. <laughs> it's all dialed the other way. And I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I apologize. But not that anybody can see, but my eyes are really bloodshot from looking at so many different screens, of so many different dimensions, and yeah. so many different settings. We're on a plane in a hotel room, rarely in the office. Um, yeah, it's just. Been an interesting start. Well, yeah. I, I could say is you've done a fantastic job. Thanks. Um, so I'd just like to, you know, have this opportunity to say congratulations to you guys. Uh, Thank you. Milestones. So not, no, no, not only in terms of how long you guys have been around, but in terms of the numbers you've achieved. Yeah, yeah. We we set a, a really big goal after we cracked through um, the ten thousand mark last year, end of June. So I so said, well, let's let's go for. You know, the 11,000 and see if we mm. can hit it, knowing that, you know, there's only so many people in the industry. So there's a natural flattening somewhere. Mm. We're still not 100% sure where that is and it, we're still expecting growth, but not mm. necessarily at the same level. But yeah, as we got to uh, uh, the last week of June, I looked at the numbers and we'd just gone eight over the mark. I thought, yeah. oh, geez, that's an easy place to slip backwards from. So mm. we held our breath and pushed hard till the end of the week on the Friday mm. and 11,044. So but, there you go. That's a win. One, one's a win, <laughs> but forty-four makes it more yeah. comfortable. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was nice. It's, uh, and we're very thankful for the support that you guys give us and everyone around the country and what we're doing. It's uh, it's a, I guess a, a validation that we're do, we're doing something right somewhere, which is a good thing. Yeah. Well, it yeah. goes both ways, mate. It goes yeah. both ways. So um, now tell me as well because we're not just talking about the numbers here. We're talking about how long the FPWA has been around yeah. as well, wasn't it? Yeah. So this year's our 30th anniversary. Congratulations. So, yeah. Thank you again. So, And I've been with the association for 20 years. So all the numbers are rolling around. Yeah. Very funny. They're very nice. Um, so yeah, 30-year anniversary. So our conference this year is a big party at night time mm-hmm. celebrating our 30th. And what, what uh, day is that? Just, uh, that's just for um, the audience Friday the 3rd of November. You should know that or is it going to get oh, in trouble? I know, I know. I should know that <laughs> off the bat my head. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Friday the 30th of November. Yep. Um, and uh, so we're doing something different this year. We're going to the uh, Royal Pines Golf Club during the day. Mm-hmm. We've just run out of room at SeaWorld's Convention Centre. Yep. Um, so uh, um, we sort of found that the, what they've done at um, the Royal Pines have really done a great job in upgrading everything. And we can do everything under one roof, so we don't have to have marquees and car parks, all that sort of stuff we've been for a while. Um, and um, at night time, we're going to Movie World, where we'll, we'll celebrate. So we've got coaches running to and from, as we do most years when we do Movie World. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've got to wait about another week before the video is released, and then you'll understand the theming. So uh, okay. I'll have to get you, hold your breath until then. That's awesome. Looking but forward to it. It's one of my uh, stupid videos, so... You, Usual, <laughs> usual funny games. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's 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 um. What I can say is, I, I await to see that video, and yeah. and I can't wait to you know catch you guys up there in November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a yeah. really brilliant content. We've um, we've sort of reason part of the reason for moving. You see, we've got really expensive, not SeaWorld itself, but mm. the marquees. Mm. So the cost of diesel and the the cost of the marquees themselves and labour went through the roof on us last yeah. year. So we've saved a lot of money in by moving, but it's also enabled us to be a bit more generous in our speakers and the mm. speakers that we paid for that are uh, nationally renowned. So we're looking forward to that daytime conversation as well. It's going to be very cool. All right. Well, looking forward to see who those speakers are. Yeah. It's okay. on the video. It's on the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, tell me, because yeah. obviously, you know, now we're new financial year, yeah. new 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 outlook, basically. Yeah. Um, you, what's, what's, on, what's one of the most controversial comment um not comment sorry topics at the moment that that comes to your mind in um, the you know since well yeah, since yeah. so i guess the, there's one conversation that just doesn't go away it's all about clawback absolutely right so yeah. and that is still very much the conversation so I've, we've been as you know talking to the federal minister about reviewing clawbacks um i've been finishing off and finessing a paper that um identifies that banks do profiteer from clawbacks um it needed some very 
uh, hard to obtain data. Mm-hmm. Um, and we eventually got to the end of where we need to be. So that paper's now, I'm just finessing the last little piece of moment, will be lodged with government this week. Um, and that's our step to say, callback should not exceed 12 months. Mm. Banks are profiteering. Here's the reason and justification as to why. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, if, if you do the wrong thing, you break your green break law, it's still going to be two years. So it's not like the two years goes away. Mm. It just says if you've acted in the best interest of the client, um, or the bank offers somebody a stupid amount of money and it world's cheap interest rate, it's not your fault, mm. then clawbacks need to be limited to one year. End of story. Mm. And then, of course, of recent, we've had CBA come out and we turn did. around say, well, they're going to uh, reduce some of the tiering on it. Yes. Um, but then push it out to two years. Mm. And when I first looked, I thought, well, that's not too bad. When I looked at the, the early numbers, yeah. Um, and I was trying to decipher the media release, it wasn't particularly that straightforward, the way of the language it was used, the way it was worded. Well, and, uh, most, most media releases are always <laughs> dancing around there, aren't they? So They are, they are. But uh, the initial number says, well, in the period from 13 months to 18 months, the break is not doing too badly, in all, in all fairness mm. to the conversation. But because it pushes out another six months, that's where you lose out. Mm. Um, and here we are, we're saying 12 months it needs to be limited to. They've pushed it out two years. They're going, no, nah, that's not right, because that increases the broker's financial risk for another six months. Mm. Yet they, the old argument, they did their job. Yep. So, yeah, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Thanks. Thank you very much. We just got the food delivered to the table right now. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Now, now tell me on, on, on that because, you know, the, uh, the, the, the media release on it is always interesting. It said that, yeah. you know, we listen to you. So they listen to brokers. Yeah. Um, I find that difficult to understand. Mm. Because if you listen to brokers, you couldn't, you wouldn't come up with that answer. Mm. Uh, hey, look, I'm not saying they're not trying to, but they're big corporate entities. Yep. Um, and depends on who interprets and understands what's being said. Depends on the result that's given. So you sort of go, um, you know, I, 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 I get it, but I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. And what we've all got to remember too, this is done by corporates up the ladder. So most of the people who see people from the banks, it's not these people that are involved in this, it's people up the chain. Mm. And uh, I think they get, a bit like the Reserve Bank government, gets a little bit disconnected from realities at times. Mm. And, uh, you know, people, you know, the, the conversation they're probably hearing is that people most definitely want a better deal on callbacks. Mm. That ain't a better deal, though. <laughs> it's, it's also, it's timely that you said that as well, because then it's just a, a good reminder to obviously our listeners here who are brokers and who are, who do deal with, um, you know, CBA, BDMs and so yeah. forth to be a little bit respectful in terms of, yeah. um, because ultimately it's not, it's not the BDMs. Yeah. It's not their fault at all. It's got no. nothing to do with them. They're absolutely. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And you're right. I mean, it, it's, I know there's a lot of stress and tension in the marketplace, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, you have to be respectful of everyone yeah. and um, and act appropriately. I know I've been the, the subject of many attacks in the media. Mm. Yeah, I've had people say, oh, Peter White's probably never spoken to a broker all his life. And they're going, shit, there used to be one. Um, <laughs> and I kind of speak to brokers every day. <laughs> or Peter White's got no idea, he's never done lending. Mm. Mm, four and a half decades of it, a little bit. Yep. You get all these things where people are very disrespectful mm. and they usually say it with no real informed knowledge. They're just lashing out. I found a lot of people who lash out. It's just because something else has gone wrong in their life mm. and you just become the bent point. Yep. It's not really in a personal attack, even though it is. My wife won't follow anything for me on social mm. media these days. She, yeah. uh, she gets very irate when people carry on like that. Well, at the end of the day, you, you are just spending, I'll call it use, useless energy anyway. I yeah. mean, there's, there's things you can control, things you can't. There's no point in, in, in getting upset about, you know, um, no, exactly some things right. anyway. Yeah. Um, but moving on, obviously, because callback is an interesting question, but is, is there any other things you see around the corner yep. or right now that a broker might need to be aware of yeah. as well? So the net of offset conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, that one's always funny. Yeah. It sort of follows a very close second to callbacks. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, have got papers in front of the commissioner who's reviewing the 2020 um, times pay- Time Payments Act, I think it's called, if I get it right. Mm. Um, and that's all about big businesses paying small business in a timely manner, right? There's a whole lead up from about 2014, 2015 that resulted in that coming out in 2020. Um, and now they've done a what was a, a plan three-year review. 
Mm. And that would you say, is this some work? No, it could be done better. And uh, our view is that the banks are taking advantage of small businesses, brokers, by not paying uh, the offset commissions in a timely manner. Mm. Our view is, is once it is the money is drawn out of offset, in the next commission run, brokers need to be paid. Yet we've got a 342% increase in the research we've done of brokers waiting 12 months to get paid if they wind up getting paid at all in some mm. cases. And that's just BS. You know, that's, that's not fair go. Absolutely. Um, so it's always, the, always interesting as well because n- not every bank's got the same um, and that's part of the problem. rules as well. Yeah. In regards to- and they never will mm. because if they all move together with the same thing, that'll mm. be deemed as cartel behavior and steering and controlling markets and moving as one. Yep. So all that, that won't happen because of the provisionings within the ACCC's laws mm. around that um, style of behavior. So they won't. But this is why government needs to step in and say, this is the guidance in which you need to act. Right? And uh, I kind of think between that, I've already put a paper to Jim Chalmers on it, the, the treasurer. Um, there's more on that in the paper going to Steve Jones and Jim and the core of that conversation because mm. it's the, um, you know, it's the cashback offers which have almost gone. Although I saw the Blue Bank putting that out today about four grand and they go, God, you guys, can you just get up to me? Um, but the cashbacks are driving clawbacks as well as what's happening with the, the lack of money coming off offset accounts yeah. and stuff. All these things bundle up to say, why don't brokers aren't getting a fair deal mm. and they're entitled to get a fair deal because they did the damn job. Yeah. Different if you don't do your job. Mm. But if you've done your job and they'll say, oh, shit, I should get paid like anybody else. Yeah. One would think. Absolutely. Well, that's, um, okay, so we got the, the we got, we talked about uh, yeah. cashbacks, we talked about clawbacks. Mm. Um, is there any, any, I suppose you can call it positive news for brokers that you can see on the horizons? Um, well, because brokers just... are constantly saying they're doing the right thing. Mm. It's been demonstrated through past six actions or lack of actions and doing things. Um, well, so, because they pulled pins on, um, going any further with reviewing brokers compliance to the best interest duty. They stopped doing that a while mm-hmm. ago. AFCA data shows that. The complaints against brokers are minuscule compared to the total complaints. So, hell, that's not minimising or diminishing the issues, but, but when you look at the number, yeah. 161 in one year mm. as of um, November 2022, mm. and only eight were FBAA members, so, so <laughs> all good there. Um, although one federal minister said, oh, sorry, state minister said to me when I said that, he said, well, I hope you're hunting down the eight. But, yeah, that's right, we're on top of it. <laughs> That's a that's a politician for you, mm. but um, yeah. So those things are all really good, and that that's important pieces of governance, and what that results in from a, a negative consumer outcome. Mm. In our case, it's a very positive consumer outcome. So brokers are doing a really good job. Yep, um, and they should be very proud of themselves and the way they're conducting themselves in the marketplace. Why well, you got to stay vigilant on that? Because at some point in time, there's always somebody out to you know drive a knife in somewhere if they can find it. And not every story is a good story, mm. but for the vast majority, um, it is a very good story. And uh, that's why brokers' market share keeps growing and will continue to grow. Mm. Um, and the thing we now need is for technology to develop. So with CDR and open banking and style platforms that are being you know, looked at by NextGen and a group called Hound and so on, mm. um, these people are looking at making sure that the delivery of the transaction happens really, really quick. I mean, Light in fast creep, and um, that will increase the brokers' market share as well mm. because we'll take out the delays that we all have with human intervention. Yep, and uh, make sure it happens uh, holistically fast. There you go. Which also brings me to, um, I suppose, another point, which is quite interesting because every at the moment, all the tech is is almost at the front end, getting the customers mm. off the market, getting the application done, yep. getting the reviews, but then your settlements or your discharges are still. Stuck back in the, uh, yeah. I would call it the 80s. I wouldn't even call it the 90s. I'd call it the 80s. <laughs> right. um, do you see any changes coming around the corner for that? or well, government, we... government has a very burning desire to get all this stuff digitized. Mm. But you know, you've got commercial pressures and tensions that slow it down. So all the banks, lawyers, mm. are justifying their position all the time as to why things should be done the way they are. And they all take different views and it all justifies yep. them doing what they do. Uh, from a legal perspective. Mm. But the thing that always amazes me, and hopefully the banks get their acts together on this, on lenders, is that it's a big pool of fish. 
you know, what you lose in one area, you're going to pick up on another. It all just cycles around. So the delays and mucking around with um, discharges, as an example, mm. discharge document, they should all be electronic. Mm. Settlements for discharges should all happen electronically. They shouldn't get interfered with. We should take a leaf out of the insurance industry that says, if you want to retain a client because they're looking at moving on, you got one shot. Give you your best shot up front. You don't get a second bite to come back at it. So in our industry, it is would be the break would ring up and say, client's looking at leaving, what's your best deal? Mm. Lenny goes, this is my best deal to hold them here. And broker does their job. Well, actually, in, in your best interest, this is a better deal. Yeah. That person wins the business. Yeah. There is no trying to pinch it 24, 48 hours out from settlement. That's just an absolute garbage dog act in my book and is completely inappropriate. Mm. And at the end of the day, they may retain the client, but they mm. pissed them off along the way mm. because they had an expectation of a settlement about to happen and then what would happen after settlement and all that, the, the things that are connected with it. Mm. And now they've got another maybe three, four week delay um, and something that sounds good, but we all forget you've got to look at the back book. Yeah. What are the existing borrowers paying? They might have got retained for a while, but their rate's going to creep up again. Mm. Mm. All the banks and all the lenders' back books are all creeping up. We've actually called on government, and a part of why I want to catch, the, uh, um, catch Jim Chalmers tomorrow morning at a breakfast I'm going to, is about making sure the banks are forced to disclose the existing borrower rate in any of their promotions and advertising so that people are fully aware up front I might be getting an interest rate of, in today's world, 6%, mm. but everybody else is paying six and three quarters. Yep. So I know that's the journey I'm on. Mm. What, what sounds good in a promotional means may not be for the long-term benefit of the borrower. Not always easy to find. That. No. I do agree with you in the sense where it's frustrating when a borrower get I'll go back a step because if you look at a lot of the questions on F&C and yep. frustrations a broker has, yep. the broker, for the most part, usually tries to keep the client with the current lender hmm. usually it's always what can we do what can you do so that the, the client can stay with you no yep. and it's usually probably more than one attempt to you know match the pricing or or whatever so that the client yeah. stays and so there's always no we'll waste a lot of time and then only you know then the broker tries finding your home and then yep. lo and behold the bank then comes to the table it's like well, you're just yeah, wasting all this time yeah. And you, you, you know, for the same result what the broker asked yeah. you originally. Yeah. And actually, they lost the opportunity in my head. So you should have, mm. like I said, it's got to be like the insurance game. You got a shot up front mm. and that's it. And that's fair. Mm. You've got to have the opportunity, you know, um, see if you can retain it as the lender. And that's all perfectly and commercially reasonable. But once you're done, you're done. Mm. You shouldn't be allowed to come back and back and back and back this thing and keep um, churning it over. That's mm. wrong. Because everybody spends a lot of time and effort to do the right thing by the client, act in their best interest, get them the best deal they can, whatever, mm. you know, however we want to phrase it, yet to wind up a day or two out from settlement and find out the rug's pulled out from under your feet, you've lost all that monetary expense in your time. Mm. Let alone the client may be up for more valuations and more legal fees, who knows, by that time. Mm. Not really helping anybody out. No. Uh, changing take a little bit. And I, I know, I'm mindful because you've got a lunch sitting That's in right. front of you. You hardly had the time to eat there. No, 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 it's all good. We're ready. All right. So we need to re rename your segment. <coughs> lunch with D and Whitey. <laughs> <laughs> we should. <laughs> um, so outside of what you're doing now, right, I know that you you um, are part of a, a global mm. um, brokering industry as yeah. well. Tell me about that because um, it's a little bit interesting that um, the Fleet Double A's um, and has decided to, to join this this group. What's the benefit that you yep. see or that you learn from this group? Yeah, sure. So mm. I'm the what's called the, the chairman of the Global Board of Governors for the International Mortgage Brokers Federation. There's a mouthful for you. The IMBF. Mm. The only one of its kind and the first of its kind. And so what it is is a collaboration of five countries from around the world and soon to be seven and potentially eight countries mm. who all are in third-party distributions and it's a, a it's an associations conversation and what we're looking at is what what's happening from an economic point of view a markets point of view government politicians regulators all mm. that sort of stuff to understand how people are dealing with similar things that others are trying to deal with and i said i first started doing this from a research piece i did in 2015 
that set this up between 2016 and 2018 in Canada. And what I found is that everybody does a very similar dance, just at different speeds. Mm. So if I want to be ahead of the curve of ASIC, say mm. in Australia, or Treasury, when they're looking at bringing in new laws and legislation in this country, when they look overseas to see what they did, I need to also understand what happened overseas. And we've done this multiple times over now. Mm. So when they're looking at doing something, we look at the parallel of what happened in another country, mm -hmm. understand what they did there, what the outcomes were like, what the debates were, mm. and then put forward our arguments or our papers here mm. with that broader knowledge, just not with our own thoughts of what may or may not happen locally. So we have this depth of knowledge that's global mm. and is completely relevant to things that we're doing here because this is how governments and regulators work. Yep. Look overseas first, then bring it in here. So um, I set the IMBF up, as I said, with Canada with that purpose in mind so we could share intel um, and also work with each other um, as we uh, go through these different periods. And it's proven quite invaluable for us. A lot of people wouldn't see all the work that goes on behind the scenes because it's within industry and stakeholder consultation and government consultations and so on. But um, it's given us a huge advantage in a lot of our conversations that we've been having here in Australia. Yeah. And coming up shortly, we've we planned for this before the pandemic, but we're now uh, in September this year having our inaugural World Summit. And what oh, we're doing is getting brokers from around the world and the associations and other mm. stakeholders to meet in one place um, to talk about the key issues that each country is having, mm -hmm. take what we know is the knowledge from around the world to brainstorm or white paper a, uh, a resolution to those problems, mm -hmm. and that white paper will go back to each country's government saying, we've discussed this as a global group, we've seen it impact, you know, something Canada's doing, Australia's been through it, this was the result, mm. and we believe this is the best way to resolve or to move forward with this particular issue. Mm. So it's not... Yeah, you know, the old anecdote, they bring your problems, bring your solution. Yeah. This is it. Mm. We're identifying the problem and bringing a solution from mm. global workings and outcomes that have happened in other countries to solve that country's problem. So that's principally the, the day that, that we're doing. Mm. We've got some really cool guest speakers coming and they're still being confirmed, but there's some pretty big names coming out from America that will be a part of this or coming within America to be a part of it. Cause this is being held in Las Vegas on the uh, 8th of September, if that's the Friday. Mm. I'll think of all these dates, I hope I'm getting right. <laughs> um, yeah. But it's the first time ever. Uh, we are doing it in Las Vegas because the NAMB, who is the association in America who's um, with us, mm -hmm. it's their 50th anniversary. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and they're having their conference on the weekend. Mm. We're doing the World Summit on the Friday, and everybody gets a free invite to go to their conference for the weekend. There you go. So it's just not the one-day thing. It's across three days. Mm. Um People can come and stay longer, do other things, of course. But well, it is Vegas, so, uh, so it is um, Vegas, so yeah. there's not plenty to do there anyway. Oh, exactly. But, and the price, I mean, it's, it's the early bird price um, from memory is uh, two and a half thousand US, mm. but that includes accommodation, includes your, all your meals on the Friday and all your breakfast. Accommodation and meals in America are mm. hopelessly expensive, mm. but uh, the US group have given us the floor space for free, so we've been able to keep the costs really well down for that. Wow. And hopefully it's the first one of many to come. Yep. And that's the plan. This will, we've had a lot of people say, oh, if I only had more notice, but I'll come next year. Mm. Say, oh, that's fine, but uh, we've got to start somewhere and this just coincides with what's happening in the US. And we'll do it in different countries every year. Mm. But uh, as we build out more countries that want to get involved with the IMBF, um, we'll have different places to go and to, yep. uh, to understand and broaden our knowledge is from. And it's fascinating, mm. for, well, from my premiere, how to understand how brokerages work in other countries. Mm and see what you can learn from that to actually play out here. Yeah. It has a real relevance back to Australia uh, in understanding what that looks like. My last question to you, right? Yeah. Would you say, knowing what you know now with those um, those other countries, how is Australia a place? Are we leading or have we got a lot of things to learn? Well, I always refer to Australia as a lucky country, mm. and in many cases it is. Um, I think that Australia has probably has the, the best overall position of anyone in the world, except for clawbacks. Nobody suffered clawbacks in the mm. manner which we do in Australia anywhere in the world. Mm. So we really get knife for that. Mm. Um, our commission structures are good, but say in America, you'll get 1.5% up front, no clawback every day, and wow. upwards of 3%. Mm. Now, if you do the maths in your head on the average loans, uh, average term of a loan, you take 1.5% no clawback every day of the week. It's yeah. an up front. Mm. Yeah? So America's got a 
quite a good advanced system there. And that's why I always get shitty here in Australia saying, well, you can get round clawbacks if you want to. Mm. You just choose not to. Yeah. Right? Look at what they do in America. And there's the learnings. America, one and a half percent, no clawback. Mm. If they catch you rolling a deal every six months, they're going to tap you in the shoulder and go, oi. Mm. But there's nothing formal from that point of view. Yeah. Um, so they've got a much better commission structure, a much better um, uh, clawback or no clawback rule. And they've got a huge population that's probably, what, 10 times us or then some. Yeah. So, yeah, the population of Australia is pretty much the population of California sort of thing. Mm. So the the drawback in their countries is, is, and in a lot of countries, is their legislation and regulatory um, governance obligations are fragmented by state or provinces. Mm. America's like that, and it's worse like that over there. You also got to have it's got a uh, interlink into real estate as well. So there's multiple licenses you've got to have, and they're different for every state. In Canada, every province has its own rules and regulations, and we used mm. to have that here in Australia under the UCCC mm. until we bought the NCCP out in 2010 mm. and uh, got rid of all that one rule across the country. Yep. We're very fortunate from that point of view. Mm. And um, Apart from the payroll tax issue, that's sort well, of... Well, so. yeah, that's still not an issue yet. I mean, that's been mm. fought out in court. Um, I actually uh, caught up with um, Chris Minns briefly the other week and he just turned to his PA at time and said, Peter and I need to have a meeting and conversation. I'm meeting up with him shortly. So mm. we spoke... By principally by text prior to the um, election, but um, we're now taking that conversation to a, a yep. new level, a new relationship. Even though government only has a certain amount they can do about it, they mm. certainly can be there as a, a guiding understanding to support mm. where we stand. Um, and uh, at the moment, it's for courts to play out. So it's all on all on hold, which is, I guess, what everybody wants. Yeah. Until that happens, and just when it happens, depending on the terminations, still doesn't mean that's end of days. Mm. Because the thing we pointed out to the Labor government, their shadow ministry, and the Liberal government, when they were in the ministry, and, and the conversations today with the Labor government now mm. in New South Wales, is that one size doesn't fit all. Mm. There's many different models, and just because a court case loses on that model doesn't mean that's a line against everybody else. And the other thing to remember: this is only about the one man band. Mm. Right, so it's not a broker who's one plus. The question is, where does the plus land? If I outsource, is that a plus or not a plus? But yeah, it's about the one man band. It's not about everyone as well. Yep. So we sort of got to bring it back into a a rationalised position. But we know every state's waiting and watching. So yeah, <laughs> we yeah. need this to play out right for all the right reasons. And that's where it sort of goes um, similar to how our conversation started. In a sense, where everyone's sort of waiting, watching mm. the. Uh, Similar to the 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 uh, sort of call it the callback issue with CBA, yeah. yeah. What you know are the other lenders waiting, watching? Are they going to change too? Which is, I think other lenders will follow suit, but hopefully they're listening to say mm. that wasn't the right move, mm. right? Because really, all you've done is taken a shorter, higher risk for a lower, longer risk. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you sort of really haven't made a benefit to anyone except. That extended term is a real pain point. Mm. And really, they should be limiting it 12 months. Mm. Unless you do something wrong, then you own it. We've got to take ownership of when we do something mm. wrong. Absolutely. Mm. Well, well, Peter, thank you so much. I know that I've, I've delayed your, your lunch long enough. That's all right. And yours. Oh, I know. I, I, I share managed. a meal <laughs> and a conversation. You should do it more often. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, well, I wish you lots of. Uh, Help a, a good time um, at the the international conference. Yep, and it's open to anyone who wants to come. So they just yep. need to reach them. And um, I can't wait to see you uh, in in November up in the the sunny uh, sunshine uh, state. Yeah, most certainly on the Gold Coast there yep. at uh, Royal Pines for the conference and mm. some great fun at night. We always try and make the night times you interesting. Do. Yeah, absolutely. This do. one will be one of the mm. most interesting. Let me yep. guarantee you. Yeah. <laughs> well, mate, thank you so much. All right, take care. Bye. Thank you.